Isaiah chapter 6, we'll read from verse 1 to 2. Isaiah chapter 6, we'll read verses 1 and 2. Thus saith the Lord, Heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me, and where is the place of my rest? Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me, and where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. For all those things my hands has, has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word in Jesus' name. One of the things that we, as human beings, really like or seek after are the things that show strength, things that manifest greatness. So you support Carl Flames when they really played well. We are proud of them. You are proud to say, hey, I'm from Calgary, even though you are from Edry, but you go, I'm from Calgary, because Calgary Flames made everyone proud. Or you look for a strong leader. You look for Stephen Harper because he's strong and he's able to carry and move people. Or for those of us that, from, that are from the U.S., look at the president as, yeah, he's a strong, mighty guy. He's reliable. When he speaks, everyone is moved. We generally tend, even a measure of success is about how big a house, how much money, and the wealth that a man or a woman has. We thank God for Canada. We've had very strong economy compared to the rest of the world. And by that, we are measured as a successful nation. The things that we count as important As we start to read this scripture, the things that we applause, the things that we praise, this scripture starts to tell us maybe those are not the things that we should be thinking of to praise. From the teachings of Jesus, you know, Jesus said, be careful when all men are praising you. Because the things that men praise is not necessarily what God praises. The things that pastor is pleased about this is oh that's one of the strongest member of the church is not necessarily what God is pleased with when men praise us it may mean that we are doing what something that displeases God it may mean that. I'm not saying it always means that, but it may mean that. So God said to these people, Heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. 
what can you do for me? Because of who we are as men, we actually run the risk, and a lot of times we do that, to think and suggest that Jesus came to die because of our denomination. So that we elevate and exalt our denomination and our beliefs, our own gathering, more than we exalt the name of Jesus Christ himself. And he's saying, what house, what thing can you build for me if heaven is my throne and the earth my footstool? In seeking the presence of God, in experiencing his love, we must ensure and remind ourselves not to chase after shadows, but to pursue the real thing, God himself. In Sunday school this morning, we were talking about do not worry, and I still want to encourage you. Come out for Sunday school. We get to learn, and you get to be able to question pastor when he says something. You find that prevalent among Christians today, we settle for things that are fake, things that are temporal, things that amount to nothing. And we abandon God Almighty himself. So we start to worry about the things that does not go beyond tomorrow. Think about the things you worry about, your career, what you will eat, what you will wear, all those things. Where does it begin? Where does it end? If you were to think that war broke out in Canada today, I pray not, but if you were to think about that, will you still be worrying about the things that you worry about? Will you be worried about getting your mortgage paid if you are not sure that the house will still be exist existing tomorrow? So the things that we put our minds to, God starts to tell us that there is really not much that you can do about them, and there is not much that you can do to impress him. Man is impressed, I am impressed, other people are impressed. Other people say, oh, Pastor B is a great guy. However, God says, that doesn't impress me. The earth is my footstool. Everything that you can build, you can only build it here on earth. It is still my footstool. In First Kings chapter 19, First Kings chapter 19, we we'll read from verse 11. Then God said to Elijah, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great 
and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. I pray the most I go that we will get to understand and appreciate these things. Because a lot of times, when I see the wind, I see the wind that moves mountains, I see the winds that breaks rocks, I start to pursue the wind. However, the Lord is not in the wind. Many of us have derailed or have been derailed in our Christian race because we saw the wind, we start to pursue it, we ignore every other thing, and we have taken the wind as though that was God. How many times have you seen the mighty, huge thing said, oh, if you can see that many people, oh, that means God is there. That is an evidence of God. You start to follow after that. Says the Lord was not in it. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. You know, when the Holy Spirit moves, we see the wind of the Lord is blowing. And at times, we mistake ordinary wind for the Holy Spirit. I know there are people, and a lot of us really, we want someone to pray, and the whole room shakes. Say, yeah, it was like an earthquake. But the Lord may not be in it. The thing that the Lord is in, the still small voice, have we been distracted or are we so focused on those preceding things that the Lord was not in that we miss out in the Lord speaking through the still small voice? The Lord is mighty. The voice of the Lord is mightier than the voice of many oceans, many waters. However, it is not the noise. It is not the shakings. It is still the Lord that we must pursue. It is the Lord that we must hold on to. Many times, the shadows being bigger than the object itself distracts us. We start to embrace the shadows rather than embracing the Almighty God. When I was younger, I did this a lot. Oh, you know, in the evening when the sun is setting, I grew up on the open line. So I didn't grow up in big cities. So I'll go out and we we'll look at how far the shadow can be, how far a shadow we can cast. So maybe I was four feet tall. I'm able to cast a shadow that shows that I'm 10, 10 feet tall, something like that. And you know, it was like, yeah, my shadow is longer than yours and all that, can you see? Think how the shadow looks bigger than the object and makes you and I 
to abandon God and start following after the shadow that he's cast. Heaven is my throne, the earth my footstool. God says he will look at one that is poor and contrite in heart. How many people want to be poor? Say, oh no, that's not what God is saying. Sorry, that's what God is saying. That is what he is saying. You know, we prayed, I think, two weeks ago, and you, if you listen to the news, you know that um, in the western part of Africa, there's been Ebola outbreak. And... Um, World Health Organization, I think it was last week, said that if it's not curtailed, more than 1.4 million people may contract the disease. And if 1.4 million people contract the disease, then I will not give you a hug anymore, kind of thing. Now, if you think about it, how did they, or how did we get into a situation where something that can be managed become unmanageable? Pride. Because I contract a disease, what should I do? I should go to Dr. Shonobi and say, hey, please help me. Yeah, I know you'll say I should pray, yeah, but I should go to him and say, please help me, and all that. But what these people were doing was, rather than going to seek help, they were staying at home and not getting healed, but also infecting others. As Christians, because we don't want to show that we are poor, we don't want to show anything that shows weakness, what happens? Even the character flaws that we have that takes us away from the presence of God, we cover it up. We say nobody must hear. Whereas the people that can help, the doctor that can heal, the one that we need to talk to that will be able to break us out of that disease, we keep away from. We then don't only limit the trouble to ourselves, we become a danger and a peril and terror to other Christians around us. Pride. So first, God says it is the one that is poor and contrite that I will look to. However, the Christian wants to be proud. The Christian wants to say, by my own hand, I have procured my righteousness. It is obvious that all my righteous works is still as a filthy rag. But because what the world applauds is the guy that can stand and proclaim self-righteousness. The flaws, the areas of my life where I need to cry out, hey God, or people around, this is what I need to be prayed for about. He go, no, nobody must know. God says, it is him that is poor and contrite that he will look to. In a relationship with God, he makes it clear that he's the self-sufficient 
and all sufficient one. There is nothing, nothing that you can do to improve the lot of God. When I want to become proud, to go, I'm a good pastor. You know, God reminds me that he speaks through a donkey, and the donkey speaks well. So there is not much that I have done that makes me really show that I'm better than a donkey. True. There is nothing that you can do. There is nothing I can do to improve God. Let the person that has not thought he, uh, he can improve the lot of God or he has improved God raise his hand. We, we do. I actually think sometimes that if not for me, God may not exist. Sometimes, then he reminds me that mm, not quite. Because when he tells me that even a, zoo, a donkey speaks for me, he goes, yeah, maybe I'll take you to Calgary Zoo so that people can take pictures of you around there if you want to continue in your pride. And, and we see in Daniel's record that God had to turn Nebuchadnezzar into a beast just because he thought there is no work of man, there is no, nothing you do that brings God under an obligation to you. Nothing. He's created the heavens, he's created the earth, he has his, his footstool, he has his throne. Nothing you do brings God to become indebted to you. Because there is nothing that he could find to put him under an obligation. In Hebrews 6.13, when he was going to swear to Abraham, because there is nothing, he said, okay, by myself, I give you my word. How sad today that we act as though God owes us a favor. Because it's really, a lot of times, it's because I think that if I don't go to church, God will really feel bad that makes me come to church. Or if I don't give money in church, God will be poor. That's why I give money. No. Sorry. There is nothing that you can do. There is no achievement, no sacrifice of yours that can improve God. When I said, yeah, how many people want to be poor? The reason, one of the reasons why we don't want to be poor is really because we want to be able to do things. And because we are spiritual, we want to be able to do things for God. God says, sorry, not much. Not much you can do. Not much you can do for me. Really, the things that I do 
Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, he said, it is God that works in you, both one, to will, and two, to do of his good pleasure. Were it not be for God, I cannot will to do anything. So when I think that God, don't you know, he reminds me. Think about this. What is the greatest miracle of all? It is you and I being saved. The greatest miracle of all is the miracle of salvation. What power does any man or any woman have to play in ensuring that? One, it is Jesus that died. He paid the price for your adoption, for my adoption into God's family. Two, it is the Holy Spirit that convicts me of sin and makes me realize I need a savior. If it were to be of myself, no. It is God that draws us to himself. Jesus said, John 6, 44, no man can come to the Father except so that I share the gospel. And you must, you, you should, Necessity is laid on you if you truly have a relationship with God. Necessity is laid on you to share the gospel. However, that does not procure you the right, does not buy you the right to think that God is now enslaved to you. You must preach the gospel. There is a necessity, I equal it to the necessity of you having to breathe in oxygen. However, it is not because God needs a favor from you. Actually, Jesus said, Friends, without me, you are nothing. Without me, you are nothing. So how can something that is nothing in itself, how unimaginable, even though we do it, we are nothing in ourselves, but we become so big in the nothingness that we think we are equal to God or greater than God. You see the problem of pride. It is pride that makes someone who is nothing to believe He's more than the nothing that he is. And that makes him to continue to remain as nothing. If God were to be hungry, he won't ask. He won't. In this passage, and I think we should stop to pray, he makes it clear, nothing, what will you build me? Nothing. So when we are charged, you are a follower of Christ. Let others know about this grace that brings salvation. Talk to other people about your God. It's not because God 
is weak. It is because he wants to give you an opportunity. He wants to give me an opportunity to partake in his kingdom. I want us to bow down our heads and I want us to pray.